I'm Bill Watson with Remax Professionals, the Watson team. We're very excited about the opportunity to present to you the Short Sale ProLogic Success Series. Our goal is to give you the competitive edge in the short sale market. Hey, welcome back. You know what, today we're going to talk about contracts. And we're going to talk why it's so important to be able to structure a real estate contract for a short sale for success. One of the things that you want to do is you want to try to structure the contract so that it functions as close to a regular real estate transaction as possible. And one of the things to recognize is that short sale contracts are mutually executed contracts that are contingent upon the seller receiving a short sale approval letter from the lien holder that's acceptable to the seller. Now the one thing that we recognize is the fact that every state has a different contract. But let's talk a little bit about the best practices. Some of the best practices are that the dates would become effective from the receipt of the seller receiving the short sale approval. One of the main reasons for this is because buyers in the marketplace today, when they write a contract on a short sale listing, they really don't know whether or not they're going to be able to buy it. There's still going to be a time frame, whether it's 30 days or 180 days or sad to say longer, before they know that they're going to be able to buy that property. So they're not interested in investing a lot of money in appraisals, which may not be any good by the time we get the short sale approval, inspections, the property could change in condition uh, by the time we get short sale approval, and so forth. So the best thing to do is to trigger all the dates from the time that you receive short sale approval. In many of the contracts that we see, we might see an action that has to take place and it'll say SSA plus so many dates, so many days. And what does that mean? That it's going to be so many days after the short sale approval. Now one of the things that you can do in order to ensure that your contracts are received by your company in the correct manner and written the right way is to create instructions for each property. How you want to see the offer structured so that it can become successful so that you eliminate having to always counter. And why is that? Because A, a lot of agents out there said to say just do not know how to write short sale contracts and B, some have their own methodologies. What you have to do is you have to come to a common, common place on these. Now, you could have an extra form that goes out to each selling agent or when you meet with a buyer in order to show them how to structure it or you can create a web page that they can go to to see how this is done. What you're going to find is most of your contracts at that point are going to come in written, perfectly clean, ready to go, able to have your seller execute and able to get it into your short sale negotiator so that you can start working on the file. What's next? We have to make sure that we've conditioned the buyer for the waiting period. Hey, home is the second most emotional word in the English language. Buying a home is not just a financial decision, it's an emotional decision. And the toughest thing about the short sale is that wait period for that home buyer. If we've conditioned them for the wait, even though we still have to maintain them, we will have a better success of moving that buyer forward to a successful closing. Thank you very much. So don't forget, go to Short Sale ProLogic, and here is to your success. Hey, make sure you come back next time when we talk about following up during the short sale process. We'll see you then.